thank you for joining us once again. It's been uh, lovely. We've been learning a lot about the kingdom and uh, I hope uh, you, you're getting blessed. Today we look at uh, the demand of the kingdom. I think uh, we need to understand why the kingdom and uh, what, what is the role that it should be done and Pastor Sam will walk us through that as usual. Thank you, Pastor Sam. Thank you. Um, good morning, everybody. I'm glad that you could make it. Um, yeah, and we've been talking in the last while about, about the kingdom and we are talking about what the kingdom, what Jesus has offered to us. Uh, the kingdom has come in his person. And when you look at the text, the scriptures, you'll find that uh, the, he's not calling us to just follow him when we can and do whatever we want in the meantime and get ready mm -hmm. to go to heaven. You know, um, I see some very radical um, parts to this to this ministry that he's calling us to. Mm -hmm. He's giving us uh, this eternal blessings. Uh, then he's expecting some some serious commitment on our part. So and 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 you know this for starters, I think he's he, he, when he's when he's talking both John the Baptist when he preached the kingdom, he called people to repent, and he's not supposed he's not he's not saying that they must repent next next week when they're ready. Uh, you know, yeah. repent now, and 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 the repentance had to include baptism and the, the baptism was not when it's uh, warmer weather you know it is it is now you gotta you gotta do this now don't wait for you know when you're ready and you know i think you know i gotta do this so you as we look at this today you'll find he's not he's not expecting god's not expecting when he's offering the kingdom to you from the and the, the people that he offered this to he's not saying to them i'll take your time you know when uh, you know when you when you're nice and ready then go for it. Now he's, he's asking for everything and he wants it now. Um, I don't think as, as even preachers, we can sell that less than what he is giving it to and selling it to, selling to us for. I think he's, he's, wanting, he's wanting us to, um, to, to tell it like it is. And so we'll go into the text. Uh, the, you know, these are the things that I think we need to uh, worry and concern ourselves with, and we'll see what the Lord's wanting to do. Yeah, so what we are saying, that even in, in the ministry of Jesus, um, in his preaching and teaching on the kingdom, you know, he is he, asking people to turn now, turn now. And yeah. he says the kingdom of God is here, is at hand, or is here. Uh, believe the gospel. He's not going to believe tomorrow, believe today. And especially for those that are going to be believing today, that's our point today. Um, I think he's asking for a lot more than I we're able to let on or, or or we are i think in many ways very compromising with with our language and our and the gospel and so on and and the lord's not like that he's just he wants he's giving you everything he's mm -hmm. offering you everything and he and he's expecting this is the thing he is expecting a lot more in return and so the expectations of god is follow me and and not tomorrow now and um, yeah. and i will make you this and he said he wants to begin that work now so i mean what we've been called to is a whole new center a whole new center of orientation before before we were not a people now we are before we were foreigners and now we belong and so we are called to um, move away from even ourselves and and our goals and our plans and ideas and whatever we think that we want for ourselves and the god the eternal god is summoning us he's summoning us he's calling Sam us to, calling us to himself 
Yeah. What What do you mean when when you say moving away from ourselves? You know, I think we're we have our own plans and our own goals. We've been living our lives. We have become lords of our own lives. Exactly. Yeah. And so when he's when he's calling us, he says, "I want to be king now. I want to be king now in your life." I am the king, and I want to be king now. I want to be Lord now. Um, he's not saying, well, take your time, think about it. And, um, <laughs> you know, and when you're ready, you know, I'll be yes, here. <laughs> I'll wait for you. You know? Yeah. No, he, he's not, that's not the gospel. The gospel is like, hey, this is serious. And if you want this, if I gave me, giving you some revelation, you understand the kingdom, you've stumbled upon it now. Okay. Yeah. So you need now to sell everything you got and follow me. That's what he's saying. Yes. So and um, yeah, you know every every other interest that we have must become secondary. Every other interest we might have uh, is God is calling us to make Him and put Him first, and everything else will be subservient. Therefore to the rule of God, to the rule of God in our lives. I don't see anything else in the text. I don't see anything else. And, and if we say anything else, then we are seriously compromising his, his word. And, uh, and it can't be a message from God because God's message is very clear. Mm. You know, this is what I want. And I no wonder the world is not yet sorted out because we have we have this gospel that is being uh, preached and taught. And uh, because we're afraid to tell them like it is, you know, we're, we're, you know, that God's calling us is the radical nature of the kingdom mm. uh, is that we are called to accept the message and must not just accept an acceptance of the message means acceptance of the radical lifestyle of the kingdom <clears throat> see acceptance of the message means there must be a radical acceptance of the lifestyle of the kingdom hey you remember jesus even jesus at 12 years old mm -hmm. family was looking for him and and he finally told him he says didn't you know that i'm about my father's business and they couldn't answer him this way or that. They just and he went with them. I said, "Didn't you know why? Why are you why are you looking for me? What what's surprising about this? I'm about my father's bit at twelve, twelve. Mm. And when you was thirty, you know, you you were saying, okay, baptize me. I'm going to be doing this. That's what I'm going to mm. do. It's time. Yeah. And for three years." So, you know, when you look at the, and you ask the question about the call of God, what is the call of God on our lives? Are there, are like, are there like different kinds, different calls for different folks? I mean, is there, is there one call for full-timers? <laughs> <laughs> and another call for, you know, regular part -time. folks? A part -time. part time Is there like the two? You know, that's what I think, don't you think? You see that yeah. that mentality yeah. in the church. Okay, you know, he's full time. Yeah, he's okay for him to leave his job and all yeah. of that. And then if he doesn't get paid, that's his problem. You know, he you know he, he left his job. You know, tough. And uh, he can give a lot of time because he got all day to pray and you know understand and do things. We regular folk. Well, you know, we can't give the kind of time. We'll do what we can do when we can and so on and so on. And, you know, yeah, we don't have to actually make that commitment. I don't see two calls. Yeah, but some, uh, what I think, um, the emphasis hasn't been on the lifestyle of the kingdom, as you mentioned earlier. Yeah. The emphasis has been, you can get born again. So don't worry what is happening with your life. Uh, you deal with it along the way along the way uh, and, and i think we play with it like we have time in our hands uh, right. 
like, oh, anything, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to fix this later or I'm going to stop this. In the meantime, in fact, I'm not part of the clergy or the cold ones. Yeah. So I can still do what I want. Uh, I think it's, uh, the emphasis hasn't been so much on the lifestyle. And uh, just maybe before you move on, just make, make some stress uh, on, on it. And what is it that is expected of us? Yeah, you know, I, I, I'm going to get into that in a minute, but but I'm just painting some pictures for us. But this, 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 this before I, I get there, you know, when you think about a call of God, you think about Paul himself, Paul, the yeah. apostle. Yeah, he was a real, well, he was a God-fearer, but he wasn't, a, you know, he wasn't really following the Lord. In fact, he was trying to put away the Christians. And he was, you know, he had murdered a lot of them, actually, uh, by putting them to the, you know, stake and whatnot, and throwing them to lions. And he's done some serious work in his life, trying to please God in his ways. One day he, if we read in Acts 9, he's got some papers, he's going to go and put more, more Christians away. And then he has a as a bright light on him suddenly from and a voice from heaven he fell from his house and then the lord is saying to him um oh this voice he heard mm. so uh, saul saul that was his name before he became paul yeah why are you persecuting me and then he was blind at this time and he said and he asked, who, who, who are you, Lord? And he says, I am Jesus. And you're persecuting me. And then the next line, Paul asks, what must I do? He says, go into Damascus and, and it'll be told, I'm going to send somebody who's going to come and lay hands on you, pray with you, and talk to you, and so on. And um, and he goes, this life is radically changed from that moment. He did say to the Lord, you know what, okay, um, you know, whenever you, whenever you think I'm sorted out of all these papers, uh, I'll try and cash it all in, and, uh, you know, I'll see what happens. And, and no, he was... <laughs> Was immediately and, and immediately under persecution, and he was let out of the down the wall in a basket, you know. So you have a lot of lot of different things happening, and then when God is asking you to 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 make moves, you you make moves, and he and he, he was a, he became a so called full time person, but he had a business on the side, and the business was making tents, and he funded the ministry himself. He was didn't have a family, you know, wife and children and so on, but he just funded himself all the time. That's how he lived. And whenever the church gave him any gifts, that was great. But but otherwise, that's how he lived. Mm. And, and it is a radical commitment immediately. So, so again, if, if the kingdom has been offered to you, the mm. divine blessings been offered to you, and the blessings of the age to come, then, then it remains. How do how does how do I enter into this thing? How do I enter that experience? What demand does God's uh, kingdom make on me? And and of course, the church has been sitting with simple things like, um, if you confess that Jesus is Lord, Romans yeah, yeah. ten. If you confess that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that Jesus has risen from the dead, mm. you are born again. Mm. Okay. From today, say that I am a child of God. Whether that man or woman has found the Lord is, uh, you know, another question. They just are called to confess uh, that Jesus is Lord, really. 
A confession is something that happens when something is going on in your own life, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You confess, you believe in the Lord. Believing in the Lord is not just mental, uh, a, a mental thing where you, you accept him in your mind, I receive. No, it, it affects your entire life radically believe that Jesus is the Christ so so the question again is is the entry into the kingdom just about a verbal confession that one would come to the front I want Jesus into my life well that's a good start mm. it's a very good start I think for you to get but you know you can't get saved until you are convicted of your own sin, that your yes, sin yes. has offended God. Your sin has cut you off and has keep, kept you in that state. Now that you come to the righteous one, you come into the one who took away your sin, there must be a question after that. So, so what happens now? What do I do with myself? Yeah. And he's the only one that can tell you whether you've got to leave this, that, or the other. There's something ought to be done where you begin a relationship with the Lord. And for me, in my, in my own life, I didn't leave my job, not at that time, no. I, um, I, the first thing that, that he wanted out was all the other addictions I had. You, you want to get rid of them. And I didn't hear from anybody. In fact, I, I found the Lord while I was still on the street in that way. I read, uh, somebody gave me a Bible. In fact, one of my friends who was a thief stole the Bible and I read the book. He gave it to me because I always had tracks in my pocket and he would say, hey, what are you doing with these Christian literature? Because we were all Hindus together, you know, smoking pot. And he says, what are you doing with this Christian literature in your pocket? I said, hey man, I don't know, I, I love it, uh, you know, it gives me peace every time I read it. He said, ah, oh, really? I, I've got a Bible, you want it? <laughs> I said, yeah, yeah, okay. And a uh, big, thick Bible, I still have the Bible, and uh, <laughs> placed by the Gideons, is one of the full time. In fact, I became quite famous with the Gideons going to the conferences, speaking, telling the story. And, uh, and they made some money out of me uh, because of that. <laughs> They're telling the story. It was their Bible. God bless them. Now, yeah, so I got, I got saved radically like so. But I didn't even go to church yet. Not that I, I didn't want to. I didn't know I had to go to church. I didn't know that. You know, I was like a pagan. So really not anywhere near the church. But I was involved in my own world, my own world is drug addiction and playing music, you know, and uh, rock music and whatnot. That was my life. I had a job, of course. I worked for the city at that time. And then uh, I had to make a decision. Not, not so much about my job or anything else, but as the Lord directed me one by one, things in my lifestyle that he put his finger on. Now, I could answer, who is Lord? Now remember, I haven't gone to church. I don't know anything else except reading the Bible. That's all I did for probably a year or so. I just read the book. And as I read, the more I read the book, the more I realized, you know, wow, this is, this, this is some radical stuff in here. And um, you know, I gotta, I gotta, you know, I gotta really you know, make some moves he wants something from me. So, yeah, drugs left and all the, some of the other things that were really not good for me, all of them departed or oh, I left before I went to church. See, church was the community, but me, I had come to Christ. See, mm. So I, I know what I'm talking about here. You know, I realize that people, many people have very different uh, ways of coming to the Lord. But I see also when the, and the gospel is presented to some people, they are given this, this cup to drink 
But it's very easy, you know. It's mostly, you know, I think China and you know, nice salsa, and they and they and they got their finger out, and they're, you know, taking it easy in their life. Yeah, I don't, I don't see that when you read the Bible. Hey, people need no. to read this book. When they read no. the book, they'll find out that the Lord is wanting a whole lot more. In fact, He wants everything. Yeah, He wants, he wants everything. He doesn't want a little bit. That's what He did with me. So one of the last things that happened to me was that my job went, hey, well, that was just when I was getting some increases and I was moving up. The Lord said, thank you. I'd like you to leave now, please, and come with me. Well, he's Lord. He is Lord. And so I, I had to go with him. So entry into the kingdom is not just about a verbal confession. Oh, I, I received Jesus into my life. Wonderful. Am I saved? Yes, you are. Five weeks into the five days later, I'll be doubting my salvation. I'll be, you know, what What happened to me? Well, you're saved. Say that. No, it wasn't like that for me. <laughs> I had to get into it, you know, because I didn't have any other recourse. At the Bible, yeah, and prayer. I prayed. While in my drug state, every day. And so I, I understand how this thing with you and the Lord works. Now, I'm not discounting the church because finally I, when I went to church, again, it was via praying as I asked the Lord to lead me to a church. I said, I, I don't know anybody. In fact, Lord, your word says we'll be in heaven and so on. I said, if I go to heaven now, I'll be a lonely man. So why don't you, why don't you lead me to a church and then when we meet, ah, we'll hang out together. At least I'll have some friends, you know, when I go, I'll know somebody up there. And it was stupid, yeah, but you know, the childlike prayer. And in my state, that's the kind of you know life I lived. And then the Lord led me to this church. I stayed in that church until you know I was married there, and I became a full-time pastor in that church. Joined the church, uh, church's staff, and then uh, after seven years, moved out to pastor a church. Uh, for I was there for 35 years, started it and helped build it and all of that, and moved on. So I I I know what it means to continually be um, uh, asked to leave something. Yeah. Are you going to come with me now? Yes, yes. Whatever you say. What do you want? Okay, I want you to leave that. Come here, you know. So he is Lord. I mean, we have a father-son relationship. Yes. But I need to learn obedience. Yes. Imagine Jesus being asked to give his life. Imagine that. He said, drink this cup. Ah, can I drink another cup, please? You know, you can drink that cup. And in a, in a, if, so it, all of us are being called the the... The kingdom is a radical entity. Yeah. What, what, what blessings we receive when we have come to him. And one of these days is going to be much easier, of course. But while we're here, the message of Jesus is clear. Repent. The kingdom of God is here. Repent would mean turn around. Yeah. 180. Turn around. 180. Change your direction. Mm -hmm. Turn and embrace the kingdom of God. That's the decision. Not when you like it, but when you're called to at that time, do this, do this now. So, like you know, life is made up of many decisions and our success or failure is, is made up of the way we make the decisions. It's about saying yes or no. No wavering. You can't say, well. Now, I don't know how much time we got, but I want to get into uh, a, 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 a text that's found in, in, in Luke 9. Mm -hmm. um, how much of time do we have? Uh, we have about 30 minutes. 30? 13. 13. Oh, okay. All right, so... So, so the basic demand of the kingdom is a response of our will. Our will. Are we willing? 
-hmm. It's not an emotional response. You, uh, yeah, you, that can happen too. You have tears, crying, you fall down, people wake you up, pray for you, fall down, and all, all of that. But after waking up, after you fell down, there is a will, there is a decision to be made. How are you going to live? Are you going to continue your life that way? What is Jesus asking? Very, very powerful. And so he's demanding a response. It's not easy. Look at it in, in, this, in this portion of scripture found in, in Luke, Luke, Luke 9. Look at this. In Luke 9, we read in verse number 57. This is not a parable. This is, this is the actual story of what happened. An event. Now it happened, verse 57 says, Luke 9, Now it happened, as they journeyed on the road, that someone said to him, Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. Yeah. I'm going to just read this uh, few verses, and then we'll, we'll talk. Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Then he said to another, follow me. Mm. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. And Jesus said, let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and preach the kingdom of God. Another said, Lord, I will follow you, but let me first go and bid them farewell who are at my house. And Jesus said to, to him, no one, no one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom. Mm. So, 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 so let's look at it, unpack it a bit at a time. I, I, would, I would say there's a demand if you're being offered. In this first instance, a guy comes up to him and, and he declares, like we do sometimes when we go, we're very emotional. We go to the front, the altar, and, and there we are, and we are crying and so on. And we say to the Lord things, I will follow you wherever you go, where you lead, I will follow. You gotta be, <laughs> you gotta be careful when you say things like that because, because, because you're gonna have to follow up on that stuff. <laughs> Rather you shut your mouth, you know, and wait for the time, you know, really, that's hard. But anyway, that yeah, I understand. So you're gonna have to. So he, he, this guy, you know, he, he's piping up and he's saying to the Lord, "I will follow you wherever you go." And then, the, and 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 the, and the Lord said to him, "Hey, foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head." Meaning, I don't even have any real estate. Hey, me, everybody got homes to live in. Foxes have holes, they have a place. Birds have nests. Me, I don't even have a pillow. Mm -hmm. Nowhere to lay my head, actually. To call my own real estate, my little pad. This is the Lord. What is he saying? He's asking this, this man. When he said, I'll follow you wherever you go. He's asking in, in one sense, you can read in between the lines. Are you serious? Mm. Are, you, are you really serious? Are you really serious to follow me? Because I'm not promising anything. I'm giving you the kingdom, obviously. You're going to get that. But are you serious about this? Because see, I don't have the, everybody has got holes to stay in, nests to stay in. Ah, but I don't even have a place myself. This is how it could be for you. There's no guarantee that I'm going to give you assets Yes, and you will have, you know, everything going on for you. Mighty blessing. See, the gospel that is being preached today has, has a lot to do with real estate. I'm going to give you vehicles, plural, you know, one for summer, one for winter houses, you know, <laughs> all of that. And a subsidious zeros with numbers in front, you know, in your bank. Oh, that that is the gospel that is being preached today. Gosh, yeah. no wonder we're in a COVID situation. The whole church is shut down. 
you know, all over the world. And then God is saying, I want my, I want my church, I want my church back. Can I have my yeah. church back? And so we're dishing out some stories and words that are, you know, the words itself are so radical from the scriptures. It's so different. And, and you look at this text, look at this one. And he's, mm -hmm. there's a guy wanting in. Say, like, let's say he's at the altar. Eh? He's at the altar of God. By now, we would have sold him everything, given him a free book, and, and, and told him to go meet us for coffee in the other room, and we're going <laughs> to talk. Right? Yeah. We're, yeah. Trying to, we're trying to sell this guy something. So anyway, here's the Lord with his people. I will follow you, and wonderful words to speak to the Lord. I will follow you wherever you, he says, listen, by the way, I, I don't know if you're serious about this because I don't have a place to put my head. Yeah. And that's going to be your lifestyle. If that's okay with you, okay. Look at the other one. The other one said in verse 58, uh, 59, but this time he said to somebody, it's not somebody asking him, this is now him saying to somebody, hey, follow me. Follow me. But that man said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. Hey, what's wrong with that? What, what is wrong? What is wrong with that was that the, that man's father didn't die that day. He wasn't standing there and talking to the Lord. The Lord said, follow me. He didn't hear that day. Somebody came there and he said, hey, your father died. And he was just saying, I'll go bury him. You know, and you bury him within a few days or, 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 or whatever. And then and it, that it's time for you, uh, you know, to come back and carry on. No, no. Yeah. What, what, he, what he's saying is that, uh, what he's saying is that his father, his father didn't die yet. His father will die, you know, whenever. He's old now and he's helping his dad and so on. Nothing wrong with those ideas. But when you are called by the Lord, this man is saying, let me first, you know, sometimes you forget that word that's there. Let me first, please, I, I'll follow you. But first, I want to bury my father. No, the kingdom, I see, demands immediate and urgent decision. You can't go, and, and then he said to him, ah, yeah, let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and preach the kingdom. What are you saying? He's, he's not being cruel, he's not being hard in that sense. Uh, you know, I don't care about your father dying. And so, so listen, let the dead, people that are dead in their own trespasses and sin, bury their own dead, but you follow me. I don't see how we can be easy. So no, don't worry. W when you want to come back and do this, I'll, I don't know, he, my father, you know, is sick now, but uh, it could take, I don't know, maybe a few years. Hmm? Oh, okay, no, don't worry, when you're ready, you know, in time, but keep coming, and it's going to be fine. So I don't see how that is going to be different for us, as it is for everybody else. How is it going to be different? for us than for the people that I found in the Bible. Amen. So it's nice talking with you. We'll, we'll continue this conversation as we, as we head into the next period. So um, what, what, what I, I think, I believe, what I see happening here is that the Lord is, is wanting an immediate response from us. Yeah. Let me go bury my father? No. And in verse 61, you read uh, what the, another man said. The first mm -hmm. one asked him, or told him, I will follow you. The, then he asked another guy, or told another guy, follow me. And then in verse 61, and, and another said to him, uh, to the Lord, Lord, I will follow you but let me first go and bid farewell to those who are at my house. Then the Lord was, and the Lord said, no one having put his hand to the plow 
and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. And again, you know, let me first go say farewell. Yeah, yeah, there's no time for that. That's how radical this call is. I mean, for us nowadays, we will say, well, let me gather all my friends and family and say something. Yeah, I guess, you know, I think that's normal for us. But at the same time, in your heart, you're going to have to say yes to God. Yes. Yes. Immediately. Yes. Let me first go say farewell to somebody else. No. Yes to you. Where do you want me to go? Where do you want me to go? What is your plan? How you want to? You are not going to give you the entire thing. There's no promises of like, yeah. like I said, major, you know, so-called uh, material blessings. None of that. You know, none of that. My 40 something years of following the Lord, no time he said, don't worry, you, you, you do this, I'm going to sort you out. No, all I see in the scripture, if I put, <laughs> if I put, I like that one. Yeah. I'm going to sort you out, it's what we seek for. <laughs> I'll sort you out. If I, if, you know, all I see in the text is if you seek my kingdom first, yeah. all these other things that the Gentiles are seeking, I will add them to you. That's all I have is a promise hmm, from the Lord in his word. That's all I have. So I have to bring that constantly to the Lord in, in my own life every time. I don't know how this is going to work out. You know, but you've got to be convinced of one thing. Did he call you firstly to himself? Did he? When he called you to himself, he called you to be with him that he might send you. There's not a, there's no other call. There's only one call for everybody to be, to be with him that he might send you. Every single one. It doesn't mean now everybody will have to leave their job. I don't think that's, that's right or practical even for him. He wants people in the marketplace. He wants people in business. He wants people in the, in, in, in the social arms of the, of the world, in government. He wants, he wants his people everywhere. He wants his people everywhere, but he'll call you to that. But you can't make that choice. See, I was a musician, and then one of the things that he wanted me to do was leave my band. Yeah. Leave the thing. Walk away from that. Okay. When? <laughs> like, like now. <laughs> yeah, so I had to walk away, and those guys were mad with me because we had contract, you know, we were contacted to play and so on. And I just didn't bother. I, I left. I left. And then the Lord would take away the music from my hand uh, for eight years as I knew it. And uh, I didn't play music like, like I knew for eight years. You know, I was on the stages. You know, we were winning contests and we were doing quite well. Um, but he didn't, he didn't want me to, you know, mess around. So the drugs left and the other things that we, I was into all were gone. Then one of the last things was my band. And then it was a few years later when he said, okay, your job, thanks. Um, so, and I, I still up to today, after something, 40 something years, I'm still giving away things. But what I discovered, ah, here's the thing, what I discovered is that he, whew, he does bless you. That, that, that text in, in Luke 6, 33, Matthew 6, 33, mm. that text, seek first the kingdom and all these other things will be added, that holds true. That I can tell you. But right now, if somebody gives you a prophetic word, wonderful. You know what? This was going to happen for you, blah, blah, blah. Great. But you, you, but you got to have a confirmation from the Lord. You know, you got to have God's word on it. You got to get God and you got to go to God. So you call me. Yeah. But I, I don't have like serious money. You know, I don't have that. But I look around, I see what God's done. I think, wow, yeah. you did that? Wow, Lord, that's wonderful. So, so the kingdom demands a radical decision. And those who reject them, um, 
you know, that's their problem. They have walked away from the kingdom. You remember that rich young ruler? Remember that guy? Yeah. Yeah. found in Matthew 19. Yeah, that Matthew 19, that guy, he came for eternal life. How can I inherit eternal life? He wanted. And, and, and you read that story, at the end of it, he never got it. Really. He came, you could say, he came to the altar. Yeah. And he was standing there bargaining with the Lord. And the Lord, he says, what can I do to inherit eternal life? Wow, what a question for a rich man to talk to a pastor about. You know, really. What can I do? Yeah, he says, well, uh, do the commandments. He says, I did that. Imagine that. He did. What? You, you never sinned that way? No, I didn't. Really? Young man, a businessman. Wow. Proud of him. And he says, oh, yeah, you got one, one, one thing I think you, you need, you lack. Just sell everything you've got, give it to the poor, and then follow me. Yeah, he didn't, he walked away. He walked away. And he walked away, he didn't get it. See, what he came yeah. for, he didn't get. So you, you, you're asking for, you're bargaining at the leadership counter, you're bargaining at the uh, counter for salvation, and so on. You know, it's not about what you do to earn it, no, but this is offered to you. Now that you've received, he's going to say, okay, walk with me. And it's the same thing I see even in, in, in Wimber's life. And I think I told you, I think it was off the record when I told you one time, John himself, you know, John Wimber, he, he also had to make some radical decisions. One of the scriptures that, that, made him uh, really follow the Lord seriously was the one about uh, the man like that story of the rich young ruler. Mm. What do you mean? I have to give up everything to follow him. What do you mean? Yeah, you got to give up everything to follow him. What do you think it means? Mm. There's, it's not a parable for you to just to work out, you know, some other inter interpretation. No. Mm. You mean to say, I must, I must now get, and then the Lord finally told him, that he, he had a business, a multi-million dollar business, music industry. Mm. He says, give that to your partner and come follow me. Eh, Lord, you, you mean, you mean, you mean I must sell my part of the business to the man, take the money, put it in, you know, an account and kind of take care of me. He says, no, give it to him. Really? That man almost died when he heard the proposal by John. And John walked away from that. And it's, you know, it's just another story for another time. But what did God, because he gave away all of that, did God radically bless him uh, to bless the entire world in worship and worship ministry? Yeah. Now, if you say, what is got more value? The multi-million dollar business or this ministry that is taking care of the entire world. Hey, bro, I'll take this anytime. But this doesn't come cheap. There's a cost. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I think I'm, um, I'm so uh, blessed with uh, the, the response. I think you mentioned about Paul, where after the Lord says, uh, why are you persecuting me? And he says, uh, who are you? He responds, Jesus. Now, just for you to respond, what should I do? I think it's a very big step. Yep. Don't, not start explaining anything, say, what should I do? And that's, uh, I think, what you've been talking about. I think in every discussion that we've had, you've uh, emphasized, we ask questions. We should ask questions to the Lord. Yeah. And I think that those uh, steps are going into the right direction. Thank you, Sam. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Bless you.